Hello, everyone, and welcome to the quarterfinals, the StarCityGames.com Milwaukee Open Weekend, the largest open ever here on the SCG Tour. Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan, we are here in the booth. Nick Miller is down in the Feature Ranch area as he is getting our quarterfinals underway. The Feature Master, you picked at home. As you join the Feature Ranch area, twitch.tv slash SCG Tours. Tyler Schmidt on your left. He's playing Burn, your number three overall seed against Junji Choi, playing Blue Moon, your number six overall seed. Burn, a modern mainstay. We have seen it do very well on every level of modern tournament, from Grand Prix to Pro Tour to SCG Tour Open. And Blue Moon, it comes and it goes, but with the unbanning of Jason Mindsculpt, we might be back for good here, Patrick. It's a nice little add, although we've seen most of the list um, that have been playing Jason the Mind Sculptor one or two copies. Mm -hmm. The full for Jace control deck yet uh, has yet as of yet not emerged in modern as a competitive deck. I don't know if that'll ever be the case, but this is a very good home for Jace the Mind Sculptor. Once B uh, Blood Moon actually starts to lock the opponent out, Jace the Mind Sculptor is a great way to finish off the game. If you're Tyler Schmidt, your plan here is you reveal Fork Bolt to the Goblin Guide is to make it so that Jace the Mind Sculptor and Blood Moon never have an impact on the game. Right. Goblin Guide gonna knock Choi down to 18. That is a flooded strand. And because of the presence of Blood Moon in the opposing deck, a lot more pressure on Schmidt to get the white spells out of his hand as fast as possible. Serum Visions is the reveal. Choi is going to sacrifice a Flooded Strand. Going to fall down to 17. We're all knotted up right now. Looks like he's going to fall all the way down to 15. Might be on the hunt for a non-basic. It is a Steam Vents that will enter the battlefield untapped. Yeah, Choi signaling that he had Fork Bolt in hand when he elected, when it was revealed to Goblin Guide and elected not to cast on the first turn, it really only could mean that Lightning Bolt is in hand. And then under normal circumstances, I think Schmidt wouldn't attack with the Goblin Guide for risk of revealing a land for free, but with another creature in hand, uh, it kind of solves itself. Here's a copy of Fork Bolt there from Jinji Choi. So we head back over to Tyler Schmidt, who is without land right now, though he did draw an Aired Mesa, timely. He will deploy that land. You see, obviously, he's got a handful of spells, given they didn't play land last turn. So a couple copies of Lava Spike, a Boros Charm, looks like a copy of Skullcrack as well. So now we're going into the into having the public information, and that complicates matters here. If I'm in Schmidt's spot, and I know that I'm not playing against Spell Pierce or Spell Snare, but I am playing against Remand, I want to play the Boros Charm on my own turn, or whatever spell you want to play. But mm -hmm. there's no reason to allow Choi to cycle a Remand in this spot. And you're not at risk of having it countered by one of the one mana soft counters. Well, he's going to play it right now, just like you want him to. He'll play Boros Charm, as Jinji Choi did search up a non basic land. So the shields were down, and a Boros Charm came through. So Jinji Choi down to nine. This will be a copy of Serum Visions from Choi. He'll draw a card, he'll scry two. Both those cards will very quickly go to the bottom. We'll head back over to Tyler Schmidt. When you only have to worry about Remand, it means you don't have to worry about all that much, as Eidolon the Great Revel was the draw. And now, where I like to go here, if I'm spent, I'm trying to resolve these spells in the face of Remand, cast spells in Choi's upkeep. Make him commit the mana on his own turn. We're going to see an Eidolon of the Great Revel. Would you prefer Eidolon in a spot like this, or would you rather see the burn spells be cast? With Choi on nine and Schmidt having so much heat in his hand, I would have preferred to just cast spells in the upkeep. Uh, I think your Eidolon getting remanded here is really bad. And even if Choi has a Lightning Bolt, he goes from nine to seven. That doesn't change any sequence of cards you can have, because all your spells deal three. I suppose it opens up Boros Charm plus a three damage spell. But this will be a Pestermite that's going to go after Sacred Foundry. See if there'll be a response here, because you see the multiple copies of Skull Crack in hand. Schmidt's going to probably fire off one of these Skull Cracks. I think this might be running into a Spell Snare, and it will. Oh. Mountain the draw. Oh, excuse me, two copies, yes, two copies of Spell Snare. Hey, two yeah. copies of Spell Snare is not bad. Then the sequencing there with him cracking the fetch land, uh, waiting for Troy to crack the fetch land, definitely good. A mountain off the top allowed Schmidt to cast a Lava Spike. Now, if you are Schmidt, you are hoping that the fifth land does not yield a Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker in combination with the Pestermite. However, if Jinji Choi had, I think he would have cast it by now. Instead, he'll be opting. That card's going to go to the bottom with the Scry. Draw a card. Here's an attack for two of Pestermite. And Jinji Choi doesn't have a ton of permission in this deck. Two Spell Snares along with four copies of Remand. The win is via Pestermite and Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Sometimes the wins will happen via Jace, of course. 
And you do see Deceiver Exarch here, too. This will be a skull crack. I like casting the skull crack here. It means Schmidt has a kill if he draws a land or a one mana spell. And he will draw a card. That's a lava spike. Well, we might as well go for it. Matt is going to get the job done. Tyler Schmidt's going to win game number one here over Jinji Choi. Burn is going to burn out Blue Moon. And Blue Moon's going to have some difficulty in this matchup because there's just not a lot of permission. So uh, in the organization on the deck list, I, I missed the two copies of Spell Snare at the end. In light of that, I think Schmidt did an excellent job of sequencing his spells there in the first game. Uh, waited for Choi to crack the fetch land so he knew he could sneak the Boros charm through um, and largely timed everything. I, I think very well to play around the various counter spells. You see these players taking a look at each other's deck list. We'll take a look at their cyborgs in just a moment, but before we do that, I have a couple of words from our sponsors. Tyler Schmidt, Junji Choi, that's what we're about to watch. Game number two up here. It's Burn and Blue Moon. And we'll take a look at Junji Choi's sideboard here first. It's a difficult matchup for him because he doesn't have a lot of permission. And of course, being Blue Moon, Blue Red, not a ton of life gain. Two Abraid, two Anger of the Gods, two Entrancing Melody, two Relic Progenitus. The one ofs are Ceremonious Rejection, Disdainful Stroke, Dispel, Engineer, Explosives, Grimlavomancer, Karanos, God of Storms, Negate. So there's only, uh, I think, two guaranteed cards to come in here and Dispel and Negate. Those are great. Past that, how much respect do you want to show for the creatures? Engineered Explosive and Anger of the Gods, very good against parts of the draw, part of the range of draws, and really not very good against others. So I, I don't know how much of that you want, but the Dispel and the Gate are great. Other side of things here for Tyler Schmidt, three Searing Blood, two Ensnaring Bridge, two Path to Exile, two Exquisite Firecraft, hello. Two Smash to Smithereens, two Grafdigger's Cage, a Shattering Spree, and a Rest in Peace. I might same 60 here. The problem with the sideboard cards that look good, the two copies of Path to Exile are not bad at breaking up the combo, but they are very risky to bring in against a deck with Blood Moon. They, they get straight in your hand sometimes. The two copies of Exquisite Firecraft seem okay, but they don't interact with the combo very well, and it's not trivial to get to three mana on your own turn, on your own main phase when you're playing against Pestermite and Deceiver Exarch. So I could see going 
same 60. I could see going to the paths and the exclusive firecrafts also. Well, same 60 worked game number one beautifully, so we'll see if Tyler Schmidt elects to do that. As these players be given the green light, Junji Choi will play first. It's an island and it's a serum vision, so Junji will Draw and scry two Cascade Bluffs and Serum Visions look to be the cards there. And while he does a little bit of scrying, got some updates here for you. Number one overall seed, Vincenzo Balistreri is going to win his match over Kelsey Dixon. Green Red Eldrazi will take care of Eldrazi Tron. So Vincenzo moves on. Let's take a look at Jacob Mackin. Just got control of a game here over Josh Turner playing Humans as Rift Bolt goes on suspend there from Tyler Schmidt. And then Affinity in the hands of Ian Jensen takes care of CJ Steele playing his Bring the Light Scape Shift deck. Two games to zero. So Ian Jensen through. He'll play the winner of this match as Junji Choi is going to resolve another copy of Serum Visions. These players not messing around. They're speeding through the quarterfinals. They just want to watch WrestleMania. I get it. I get it. I doubt it. They want to watch Roman Rock and Reigns win. Rock and Roman. They want to watch it. No one wants to watch that. Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle. Hello. The family members of the participants <laughs> in that match do not want to watch it. That might be true, actually. Sounds like you're invested. <laughs> I'm invested in not watching it. <laughs> Tyler going to sacrifice the land. Maybe a sacred foundry on the way. I guess there's... You know, I guess it's cheap heat of some sort. If I don't, if I literally don't want to watch it. That's true. Yeah, that's true. It's a sort of heat. Yeah. Don't worry, it'll be on in the hotel room when we get back. Don't worry. I got you. I got you. Eidolon the Great Rebel is going to be hit by the Spell Snare. It's a great exchange on mana there for Jinji Choi. Fork Bolt the draw. It's Cas Cascade Bluffs the play. And Schmidt's hand here. He is uh, very happy that Choi did not have Blood Moon that turn. You can see multiple Boros charms in hand. There's a copy of Aired Mesa. And that's the risk in this kind of matchup. You know, you're, it's really hard to side out Boros Charm. And L Lightning Helix is probably easy to get rid of, but Boros Charm is just so efficient. But you are at risk at all times of getting tagged. Gonna do a little serum visioning again here, Will Choi. Bottom cards. Gonna make them take those two cards, put them on the bottom. Excuse me for the scry. There's a Desolate Lighthouse. Boros Charm. Let's start letting them rip. Snapcaster Mage on Spell Snare, huh? Yeah, I think I would have preferred a response here from Schmidt. And if you're gonna do this, Boros Charm in response to the serum vision when Choi can't Snapcaster the snare. I'm gonna go back over to Tyler Schmidt now. Is a nice Searing Blaze target. I'll give it that. Yep. I'm sure he'd like to save Searing Blaze for Kiki Jiki or Pester Mike, but Snapcaster Mage has presented itself as a target. There is a Searing Blaze. Take care of that Snapcaster Mage. Maybe a good time to resolve a lava spike. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Just gonna pass actually and leave up lightning bolts. A little surprised by that. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm typically a pretty big fan of, of being mana efficient against this deck because they disrupt your mana on your main phase. There's no guarantee you get to sequence everything exactly the order you want. I'm also not sure what the upside is of holding Lightning Bolt at this point. Excuse me, holding Lava Spike. I'd rather hold Lightning Bolt in case I have to interact with something. And instants are just at a premium anyway mm -hmm. when you're just playing against these blue decks with, you know, some interaction. All right, here's Pester Mike. This is kind of what you're talking about. Because now without a Lightning Bolt, there's a little bit of fear here. Now here's a Boros Charm. That's fine. Schmidt will draw. Picked another copy of Boros Charm. Here's Lava Spike. Imagine if that had been a Lightning Bolt. He could just keep that in his hand. Now if Kiki Jiki shows up, the game's over. Yep. And there's no, there's no interaction here for Tyler Schmidt. So getting a little bit risky as our burn player as Choi will draw a card. Sign though, no Kiki Jiki. They're not willing to crack the Flooded Strand and fall into three. Fair. So 
Good news for Schmidt. If Choi's not willing to sacrifice the Flood Strand and, and even the hopes of drawing Kiki Jiki for a kill, uh, probably means his hand is vulnerable to more burn spells. So he's short on permission. There's an attack for two from Pestermite. And this is a Snapcaster Mage. Yep, going to have to do it with actual blue mana. So yeah, float through, blue, blue, colorless, yes. Yeah, this looks good. <coughs> now blue floating, can recast the Serum Visions, draw a card, scry two. Both those cards will go to the bottom, pass the turn back. No upkeep effects, Tyler Schmidt will draw. This is an exquisite firecraft. That's uncounterable. It's unstoppable, and that is going to do it. Tyler Schmidt's going to win this match over Jinji Choi. Two games to zero. Burn is going to destroy Blue Moon. It's a very, very difficult matchup there for Jinji.